fact, I think the end of money is far closer at hand than many of you would probably realize. That, however, isn't really what I find particularly interesting about this topic. What I find particularly interesting is the view, what happens after the end of money? How do we get to a point where money is no longer a, criti a critical part of our lives? And what happens to every part of our life after money has disappeared? And that's really what I want to spend some time today talking about, you, uh, talking about with you. Now let's start with the end of money and, and why is this going to happen? And the first really can, can be put down to technology. And the technology today is, is absolutely light years ahead of where you probably think it is. But I want to talk about two things, and they're really linked to the smartphone, the iPhone and other smartphones. And the first of those is called NFC, or an NFC chip. Now, many of you may not know what an NFC chip is, but you will. It stands for Near Field Communication. It's probably what you already use in order to get into your building. It's a building pass. The problem with an NFC chip is it doesn't allow you to make a payment. And so what's required there is what's called a secure element. And the secure element encrypts and keeps safe uh, your, your financial details, transfers that to the NFC chip, and that's how, when you walk around, you can use your phone to pay. Now, these two things are going to transform how you pay for things going forward. There are, of course, other pieces of technology which will play similarly important roles, including GPS, which really will help marketers, but also a series of, 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 of security technology. Uh, the security technology that, for instance, will allow you to take a picture of yourself with your phone to authenticate the transaction you're about to make. And many, many more I won't go through. So the technology is there that will make cash needless. But what are companies doing? Is there an ecosystem? And will that ecosystem really help push this forward? Now, there are four kinds of companies. They're not investing millions or tens of millions or even hundreds of millions. They're investing billions and billions of dollars right now as we sit here in this new, new technology and payments. They include the major banks. They include the biggest marketing companies on earth, Google, Facebook. They include what I would call payment companies, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, many others. And they include the biggest handset manufacturers in the world, Apple, Google to a degree, Samsung, HTC. Billions and billions of dollars are going into it. Now let's move to the consumers, because we know the technology is there and we know the money is there. And what we find with consumers, I want to start with mobile. Three years ago, we all know everyone's using a mobile phone. We all know that that's happening across the world. Three years ago, you might not have known that less than 1% of all bank transactions went through a mobile device. This month, it's my belief, that it's the first month in the history of Australia that there will be more transactions that go through a mobile phone then go through the internet. The mobile phone is the dominant banking, uh, banking channel on Earth. And half of people that have a mobile phone have already used that phone in a shopping experience. Now, what about contactless? So the technology that allows you to go and tap your phone or tap, tap uh, a credit card and pay for something. Well, at the beginning of this year, this was less than 5% of all transactions. This has all changed. Right now, I believe one in six transactions in Australia are done using a contactless transaction. I also believe in certain convenience categories, so consider IGA, consider 7-Eleven, that more than 50% of all transactions are going through the contactless chip. And I believe that um, the biggest grocery stores, Coles and Woolworths, by the end of the, this year will have all aisles, all stores contact, contactless accepting. And so the end of money is close. And it's far, far closer than I think any of us really imagine. That's the boring bit. And I want to go to a completely different bit for a moment. I want to talk about what's called m-commerce. Using your phone to actually pay for stuff, not in the point of sale, but, but surfing your phone and using your phone and then paying for stuff. And the term, there, there's a problem for all of m-commerce. m-commerce is less than sort of 5% of all online commerce. The problem is the phone is too small. And so if you've ever tried to buy something on your phone and put your credit card details in and, 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 and the dates in and the CCV code in, what have you discovered? This is a total pain, and I'm going to go to the computer, I'm going to start up my PC, and I'm just going to do this properly. There's a term that's going to fix all that, and the term, if you haven't heard it, you will. It's called mobile checkout. 
And mobile checkout allows you, your bank knows where you live, it knows your address, it's verified your address, it knows your second, third, and fourth address should you have one. It will allow you, with the click of one button, to buy and have delivered anything you want surfing the phone. It's called mobile checkout. Um, right now, I believe it's a top three global priority for Visa, for MasterCard, for Google, and for PayPal. Again, we're not talking millions, tens of millions, or hundreds of millions. We're talking about billions of dollars right now being invested in a concept many of you have never heard about called mobile checkout. There's something that is even more interesting about mobile checkout than you think. The phone is small, and it will allow, at the bottom of that phone, for a very small number of brands. I would think four. What that means, as an economist might say, that means this is rival. This is a winner-take-all market. There will be four winners, and there will be no other, no other players. And that's where it gets really interesting, because now we're talking about the most important concept in business. We're talking about the concept of power, and who has it, and who doesn't have it. Now let's go to a third concept. Let's take that first concept and that second concept, and let's, let's bring them together. Because this is really interesting. So if you've got four players that now sit in the middle of mCommerce, and those four players also attach to that device, which is already in existence, NFC capability, then those four players are no longer dominating mCommerce. They're dominating all commerce. And here's where you get something that's terrifically transformational. You get four companies on Earth that sit in the middle of just about everything that you buy and everything that you sell. If you thought power was important earlier, power is now just taking on a whole new dimension. Now that, that I think you can get to. I think that, that sort of makes sense to you. And I think, yeah, I, I would sit there and think, that, that is something that I could foresee happening in the future. And now I'm going to become wildly speculative. Everything I'm about to say may not happen, except it plausibly could happen. And this is what I'd really like you to consider. Could this plausibly happen? I'm going to, I'm going to list a few technologies for you. Uh, the first is mobile checkout. We've talked about that. The second is in-store payments. So now we have mobile checkout and in-store payments. Um, we have what's called photo recognition. I was recently uh, in Palo Alto, and I went to the Apple Store, which incidentally is a very, very cool place to be. And I walked in, and, 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 and the sales agent came and said, dude, I've got something that's so exciting. And I, and I took it, and, and I, that was my American, I, I'm Canadian. <laughs> and, and so I took the phone, and, and what it did was this. It used photo recognition to recognize everything in the whole store. And when I, it, it pushed up two buttons for me, it says, buy now, or it says, it says, learn more. I click buy now. Apple has half a billion distinct user payment credentials on file. Mine is one of them. Many of yours are one of them. I bought it, I owned it, I walked out of the store on that basis. So there's photo recognition. Um, there's optimized uh, web searches. We know about this, Google, Yahoo. Yelp. Yelp uses GPS to optimize a web search based on where you are and therefore where you should buy. So there's optimized web searches. And there's global logistics. Uh, I remember 10 years ago sitting in my office in midtown Manhattan, and I could order a book and have it arrive before I went home. Now, put all these things together, and I want to I draw a concept that you're aware of. Does everybody here know what Shazam is? Shazam is one of those rare moments where I, I thought, the world is different now that I know this exists. The other one was Google Earth, right? <laughs> I, 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 took, I took a day off work to just surf the world. <laughs> and Shazam can take three seconds of any song ever. And from that three seconds, it can recognize what it is, it can show you what it is, and it can ask you if you want to buy it, and then you can. So uh, here's the concept I want you to ponder. Shazam for everything. I'm not kidding. Think of the technology that exists today. I mean, this blows me away. You can take your phone, you can point it at anything on Earth. If it's purchasable, it will be recognized. I could point it at a person, I could find out his shoes, his jeans, his shirt, his hat. It can optimize where I could purchase those from. 
I could click buy now, and I could own them, and they'd be shipped to the address that my bank had on file. Now, this is, this is stuff that really can change the world, and I want to talk a little bit about, about that. I want to talk about power in that context. So let's imagine this. What has happened to retail? Retail in this environment has actually become a showroom. The notion of having a checkout counter no longer matters because you won't have them. So you have showrooms that you can wander into and take photos of things and buy them if you want and have them delivered to you. So is it possible, let's go back to this concept of these four companies, is it possible that these four companies are the only four companies that remain retailers on earth? And then what happens to everything else? Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper into that. I'm going to argue that there might be five companies that will remain, five industries that will remain. The first of those is retail. Retail will be the person that owns that interface that allows you to connect to what you want to buy, of which there might be four. The second of those companies will be, well, if you're going to buy something, there's going to be this optimized web search, and you're going to buy the stuff that's the cheapest and the best. So you're going to have wholesalers who are best at producing something, and on that basis, you'll buy from them. So you'll have uh, wholesalers that are extraordinarily efficient at producing. You're going to have great production companies. You're going to have a third kind of company, and those are companies that have massive amounts, probably, of international patent lawyers on, 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 on site at all times to make sure that they innovate, they have patent protection over that innovation, and then they can sell it for a period of time. I'm going to come back. There are a couple other companies, but I want to come back, and I first want to talk about the future of crime. What happens to crime when money has, has been taken into a very, very small compartment of our economy? What happens when there's nothing to steal, and if there's something to steal, there's no place you could go to sell it for money? How do you police a state where that sort of crime no longer exists? What sort of crime will be left? Well, the crime that will be left is what we call cybercrime. And so this, this next company that will probably still exist, and there'll be a lot of them, or there'll be very big ones, are firms that specialize in the security of cybercrime. Now, what's the fifth company, you may ask? Those are logistics companies, and there might be vertical integration, but those would be think people that can, can get whatever you buy from wherever it's made to wherever you want it delivered. But is it possible that this, all this change in technology is actually going to leave us with five companies left in the world, five kinds of companies left in the world? I don't think I'm right, by the way, but I could be. Now, this one's really going to surprise you. So you have four companies. You have secondary currencies. We've always had secondary currencies. But what if one of these companies has a secondary currency? What if you had a secondary currency that you could spend anywhere in the world for anything you wanted? What if that secondary currency was convertible from and back into any other currency that you wanted? Now let's imagine you're sitting in a part of the world where you don't like your currency. Let's say somewhere in Europe today. What would you do? Well, well, you probably might buy the global reserve currency, the, the US dollar. You might, you might buy that. You might buy gold. There, there is a problem with both of those. The problem with both of those is you can't walk down the street in Athens, say, <laughs> and buy coffee with gold bouillon. But you could if instead of protecting yourself from currency fluctuations, you bought this global currency. Could we have a situation where there's a global currency that is no longer state-owned, but is owned by a private company? And what are the implications of that on monetary policy? What are the implications of that on all of our lives? Now, I, I raise these because these are a couple of things that I think are really interesting as implications. But really, the point of really what I'm saying here today is I want each of you to think about what are the knock-on effects from this first cause and this first causes there are massive changes in the technology and the consumer behavior around payments that will invariably lead 
to a situation where we no longer need cash. Once that's gone, the world is different, and the power sits with a whole new set of companies. I wish each and every one of you luck in navigating this world, because it's a world that may well be very, very different to the world in which we sit today. Thank you.